Ed Blakely has served in different capacities under a succession of presidential administrations, has guided government policy on urban planning and is a widely cited academic. My name is Sean Britton and each week Ed and I have a chat about what's the latest news out of the United States, talking everything politics, planning and policy from sea to shining sea. Find us on iTunes, Wooshka, Facebook and Twitter at US of Ed. Big story of the week, the Nunes memo alleging the FBI applied for a warrant on shaky ground based around the Steele dossier which Nunes is claiming was funded by the Hillary Clinton campaign. A lot of very questionable claims in this memo. Trump says it vindicates him completely in the Russia investigation. Other Republicans are less effusive and others are saying it's a blatant attack on the American justice system. Ed, what are your thoughts? That memo would have gotten an F in any decent high school for poor research, must have been done on Google, uh, (laughs) for non sequiturs. How could a man who was not accused of anything uh, be a big witch hunt on FISA that would clear Trump? Mm. Don't get it. If FISA investigations were poorly conducted, pick a better one. That one wasn't very well done. And the man had been under investigation for several months before the election. So give me a break. And if it's about FISA, make it about FISA. It has nothing to do with Trump. The Nunes memo, though, it's also raised, uh, it's been raised as a possible excuse to fire Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Give us a refresher, Ed. Why would Trump want to do that? Well, he wants to get rid of Rosenstein so he can get somebody in uh, who'll get rid of Mueller. Uh, So that is so patently obvious and so patently uh, ridiculous And it would put him right in the crosshairs of obstructing justice, just like Nixon did. The man doesn't read. That is obstruction of justice. Let's be clear about that, Uh, because he'd only be removing him to keep the investigation from going on, from stopping it. If he tries to stop the investigation, it is obstruction of justice. Even a first-year law school student knows that. At its base, though, the memo exists for one reason and one reason only, regardless of what, as you mentioned there, you think of FISA, you think of FBI tactics. It exists because Republicans see undermining their own investigative agencies and Justice Department as beneficial to their agenda. Uh, What kind of response do you think the FBI will have? Oh, my God. I'd hate to be investigated by the FBI with you accusing them of all this skullduggery, they are going to be like sore hornets. They will be looking up everything in Trump's biography, in his tax returns. If he gets through this, he will be the stungest bee in history. They will have so many charges against him in state courts and federal courts, international courts, he will be in big big trouble. Every organization comes together when it's under threat, and he's threatened the queen bee of organizations. Look out. And obviously, you've said this uh, several times when we've talked about the Russia investigation in the past, Donald Trump sitting down with Robert Mueller himself. Trump's lawyers very much saying, well, this is a very foolish uh, thing to be doing. You know, we're not going to do this. The U.S. president's not going to sit down with this investigator unless there is absolutely no other choice. And as you've said in the past, this is a wise move because if they're going through his biographies, they're going through every little piece of evidence they can before Trump sits down with them. One false statement is a broken law. Uh, Trump would be breaking the law by lying to the FBI in this interview by making any kind of false claims. That's exactly right. And uh, so his people are worried about that. But also, there's now enough uh, information to take him before a grand jury. The grand jury has already been impaneled. This grand jury's impaneled to find out who in the administration was talking to the Russians. He is making it easy for them with his tweets. Every time he denies it, 
if you're sitting in the grand jury, you say, well, I better find out why he's denying it. You can't cry wolf too many times or the wolf will appear. And the wolf of the grand jury, which Trump seems nothing, know nothing about, is far worse than an interview. Because when you go before the grand jury, you have no lawyers. It's just you, the grand jury people, and Robert Mueller and his associates. He's opening himself up again to a Nixon problem. The court's already ruled on this. The president can be called before a grand jury. I wish the man would read something, maybe the New York Times to start with. <laughs> Look, moving on, Ed, the big economic story, the Dow Jones has plunged, I believe, over a thousand points twice this week. Many are saying this is just a correction in the market, no need to panic. And without a really major event, it's hard to point fingers at the causes of these kind of things. However, Trump took a lot of credit for when the stock market looked good. Will he take credit or rather will he take flack for the bad? I don't think he will. Uh, he should uh, just because, because of his hubris. But the stock market is now correcting itself. Uh, stocks are way, way overvalued. And this correction is necessary. It'll, it's necessary to cool the market down and to get values back to where they should be. But it's also necessary to give the Fed some room to hike interest rates. And they will, probably a half a percent or so, and get things back on an even keel. Uh, Trump does not run the U.S. economy. He thinks he does. He's barely running the U.S. government with one appointment a week now, uh, and he's barely running himself. Uh, so I think Trump is now a non-player in all this. If he's indicted, the market will go down, but it won't go down much because this is now anticipated. Speaking of things not exactly running smoothly, there was talk of another government shutdown this week as well. Trump saying, I'd love to see a shutdown if we don't get this stuff taken care of, this stuff meaning uh, immigration matters. But Republicans and Democrats have seemed to reach a bipartisan deal on the budget. What's the latest? Well, that's a good thing. Uh, it's hard for the military to operate without a continuing budget. Uh, you can't go out and say, well, we're going to order a tank, but we don't have the money right now. Or you lose your customers. It's hard to do international trade without a budget. It's hard to run the national economy without a budget. So having a budget is a good thing. And the Democrats did a good deal there. Now the question is DACA. And of all the people, General Kelly made an ass of himself on this by saying, well, people who were too uh, lazy to get, get off their butts and file for DACA, we're going to cover them. He didn't have to say that. He could have said, there are some people who just haven't done this yet for a variety of reasons, something like this. But now Kelly looks weak, dumb, and stupid. DACA will be done. There'll be a long trail to citizenship. I would say it'd be six or seven years with people who keep their noses clean. There'll be some extra time for serving in the military and good, doing other good, good public service. The DACA people who want to will get through. I think the other bigger issue, though, is the chain migration. If you have a baby in the United States, that allows you and your mother and your daughters and everybody else to come to the United States. It doesn't in other countries, including Australia. This has long been stuck in the crawl of a lot of Americans. And I think there'll be some changes. The lottery will go. A point system similar to the one we have here will be put in. And relatives covered will not just be the children, but it'll probably be the father and mother of the people who gain citizenship, but not beyond that. So cousins, uncles, aunts, and other people won't be coming into the United States. Uh, they can come in on their own merits, like I came into Australia, couldn't use my wife, but I could use my own skills and background. And I think that's not a bad way to go. And that was a point that was raised in the State of the Union, which we talked about last week. 
Speaking of the State of the Union, Trump made this little joke, just a casual throwaway line, that Democrats were maybe treasonous for not applauding during the State of the Union, during his speech. Is it a sign of how normalized Trump has become that this barely well, rates a tremor on the outrage o meter? I think, and I've said this several times, Trump is no longer president of the United States. The United States is being run by a troika, which includes the Secretary of State, the Vice President, and the Secretary of Defense. They're running the country. Trump's scarcely involved. He doesn't meet with anybody. He just runs his little tweet. He sits in his little corner. No one's paying any attention to him at all. Uh, the United States is muddling through. Uh, these are the dark days of America. And speaking of these kind of, uh, well, authoritative statements, news has come out that Trump wants to hold a large-scale military parade in Washington. Tanks, missiles, basically the whole box and dice, honouring, he claims, American servicemen and women. Everyone loves a parade, Ed, but what we're talking about here is expensive, impractical, and speaks again to Trump's weird appreciation for leaders like Vladimir Putin for Kim Jong-un. What's your take? Um, this is laughable. But the U.S. does have parades on the 4th of July, military parades and on Armed Services Day. Those will go forward. They may be a little bit bigger than they were before. But how it isn't in the budget. Say, let's cancel the wall and have a parade. I don't know. This guy, again, as I said just a minute ago, he's making statements that have no reality. He's out of it. No one's expecting him to do anything that's intelligent or important. Notice the vice president is taking up North Korea, and he's the one speaking on the North Korean issue in sync with the secretary of state. They're doing a twosome on this surrounding North Korea conjoling them with their movements starting this evening uh, with the Winter Olympics and pushing them on the other side to go off the military angle and working with the Chinese. I think Donald Trump is now the toy boy that they just let do his little thing, play in his little playpen. And very soon now, if this indictment comes down, the Republicans are going to run for the hills. Ed and I'll be back next week to talk the latest on American news and politics. Subscribe on iTunes and Wooshka to stay up to date and show us some love on Facebook and Twitter at US of Ed.